Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our program, Reflections on the Glorious Quran. A program in which we try to explore the meanings of this glorious book, in which we try to understand the message of this book that is life transforming and changing our lives for better. And in today's program, I want to talk about a very famous surah of the Quran, a surah that some of you might be reciting almost every week on Fridays, Surah Al-Kahf. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommended that you know, we read this surah every Friday and particularly at the time of the Jal, you know, and in that will be our salvation and we will be rescued from the trappings of the Dajjal, the Prophet said. So let me just begin by selecting few of the stories in this wonderful surah. The surah has five main stories. Uh, the story of the young men who escaped from the uh, anger and the wrath of their Roman em emperor uh, and then, you know, hid themselves away for many, many years. In fact, the Quran tells us for three centuries. Uh, and so there's a story about these wonderful uh, young men who saved themselves. The second important story in this uh, surah is the story about the two men, the poor man and the very rich, wealthy um, entrepreneur. And third story is the story of Adam alayhi salam and the uh, shaitan. Uh, the fifth, fourth one is Musa and Hizr alayhi salam. And the final story is that of Dhul Qarnayn. Uh, I will, inshallah, will Aziz, explain you know, in, in, in as, as, as much as I can the, these surahs, but also try to link them together and try to understand what is the common thread that unites and that weaves through the five stories. And so what is the central theme of this wonderful uh, surah, Al-Qaf? So let's begin by looking at the second of these five stories, the story about the rich man and the poor man. The Quran begins, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa dhurib lahum mathalar rajulain ja'alna li ahadihima jannatain min a'nabin wa hafafnahuma binakhlin wa ja'alna baynahuma zara'a Kiltaljanatainiatat <laughs> So in this passage, I'll, I'll give you the translation, the parable of the rich man. Tell them the parable of the two men. To one of them, we gave two orchards of grape hedged by palm trees and a cornfield in the middle. Both orchards gave abundant fruit throughout the year and we made a running stream between them. So he had a lot of agricultural produce. One day he said to his friend, as they were arguing among themselves, I have more wealth and a larger family than you. He entered his garden having wronged himself. He said, I do not think that these orchards will ever perish. Nor do I think that judgment day will come. And even if, it, if I was returned to my Lord, I will certainly go to something better than this. And then the poor man warns him 
his friend said to him whilst he was arguing, How can you deny the one who created you from dust, then from a drop of sperm? But for me, he is Allah, my Lord. I do not associate anyone with my Lord. When you entered your orchard, why didn't you say, There is no power except that of Allah? Even if you saw that I was less than you in wealth and number of children, I hope my Lord will give me better than your two orchards. He could send a thunderbolt from the sky on your orchard and turn them into barren land, or its water level could sink deep in earth so that you would not be able to reach it. So the, so the Quran is really telling us the story of these two men the rich um, agriculturalist who's got these two wonderful orchards and then not just orchard, vineyard and a, a cornfield um, and in, in, in both of the orchards and then between them runs a stream. So really you couldn't expect anything better and can you just imagine in the barren, dry, arid deserts of Arabia, to have something like this, of course, uh, would give you enormous wealth uh, and standing and, 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 and power and fame, really. So this was a, someone who was really very wealthy. You know, this is how the Quran describes um, very vividly uh, his possessions, his agricultural land, and his uh, palm groves and vineyard. Then, you know, the um, but, but he has a friend, someone who he's familiar with, somebody who he uh, perhaps grew up together, uh, his neighbor. But he's a poor man, right? Yeah, he doesn't have uh, much means. And, you know, they were arguing, the Quran tells us. And it's interesting, they were arguing. What would they have been arguing? Well, the, uh, the answer the, the, the lies in what the man says. How can you deny the one who created you from dust? and then from drop of sperm. So they were arguing about th theology, effectively, uh, religion. They were arguing, uh, you know, does God exist? Uh, and what will be the fate of those, you know, who d do wrong? And, uh, but, but this um, uh, arrogant and the rich man, what does he do? He says to him, look, you know, um, you, you talk too much. He says to the, the, this poor friend, you, you just talk too much. Uh, and uh, you know, the, the reality is that I am far more wealthier than you. I have far bigger, uh, you know, larger orchard. I have a far larger number of children and family. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm better than you in every sense. So your idea of God, your idea of religion uh, is, is, is really uh, of, of, of no consequence. I am but you know, powerful. And uh, so there is no, pa and, and, and then, you know, the uh, man of God, this poor man says to him, listen, um, remember, you know, there is no power except that of Allah. Even if you s saw that I was less than you in wealth and number of children, you know, I, I have greater hopes of my Lord. You know, I really don't uh, buy into this whole idea that because you've got more wealth, you've got bigger orchards, somehow you are special. You know, there's nothing of the kind, you know. Um, and, you know, he warns him. He, he says, you know, anything could happen to your material wealth. Anything can happen to it. Uh, you know, the water level could sink deep and deep, and, you know, you, you could lose the stream, all right? Uh, or, you know, a thunderbolt from the skies could actually leave your land barren. All these are possibilities, you know. This world is not without, you know, its difficulties and changing times. Um, so what happens? So the next part is where the orchards are destroyed. Verse 42 says, so his fruits were destroyed. There he was, wringing his hands, regretting what he had spent on it. The trellises had fallen down and he sobbed. I wish I had never associated anyone with my Lord. There was no army that could help him against Allah, nor was he able to defend himself. This clearly shows 
that the real power belongs to Allah, the absolute truth. To, to believe in Him gives the best reward and the best uh, outcome. Now, so what happens? Well, you know, let's just sort of recount the story very briefly. So there is this wealthy man who has these two orchards, uh, you know, which are ideal in terms of producing grape, in terms of producing cereals, and in terms of giving a very big produce of dates as well. So he's got these wonderful um, two orchards, and there is a stream running between them, so they're well watered. I mean, it, it's, it's an ideal um, you know, situation, really, uh, for this um, rich man. He's arguing with his poor um, fellow neighbor, and this really is interesting. You know, the Quran is, in, in, in a way, um, you know, this is addressed to the Meccans. Uh, and and uh, so, uh, in, in a way, it's, you know, again, saying, well, yes, you are wealthy. You know, you have these um, orchards in, in, in Fife, all right? Uh, you know, Abu Sufyan had them, uh, Walid ibn Mughira had them, uh, Abu Lahab had them. So they, they, they had these uh, orchards, okay? Uh, but Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu is teaching you something else. He was teaching them just like this man was teaching his fellow um, uh, friend how uh, you know, they need to be careful and to be leaving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. Um, and, and his response is very interesting. You know, first, you know, he says, look, I am far wealthier, richer than you. I have a big family. Okay. Who are you? What are you to me? You know, of course, this is a arrogance, really. It's a very sad state of affairs when a rich man, you know, shows off and boasts about his wealth, that uh, I have all this wealth, I have all these material things. Um, and who are you? You know, you've got nothing. You're empty-handed. You know, you're a poor man. How can you talk to me like that? <laughs> you know, this is the arrogance of the rich man. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the poor man, of course, is, is perhaps, as, as I said, grew up together, a neighbor, and, 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 and possibly someone who was well acquainted with him, uh, kept on reminding him of his duty towards Allah and to be worshipful and to be just and fair all the time. And, you know, this in itself is a very interesting because what it is reminding us of is, you know, good friends should always be reminding giving nasiha to their friends, okay? Uh, whether they are rich or poor, uh, whether they are older or younger, whoever it is, you know, we should always be there to give the right, you know, message to others who are in need of it. And, you know, he really felt that this man needed guidance and he's providing him that. Anyway, his response is very negative, okay? He says, well, look, first of all, I don't think there is a, a God and even if it, there was one, I think I'm going to be better off, okay? Again, a very arrogant kind of uh, response. And uh, this man warns him, don't take things for granted, you know? Yes, you have wealth today, but it could perish any time. You know, a thunderbolt can strike it. So what happens? Well, lo and behold, soon afterwards, what happens is a thunderbolt, you know, this is a lightning, um, and, and, and hailstones and thunder that really destroys his uh, palm grove. All the trees fall down. Uh, the trellises on which the grape vines were uh, you know, spread out fell down uh, and the corns were all burnt to ashes. So this was a catast catastrophic event. Okay, Something very nasty happened to his garden uh, and orchards the next um, day or whenever. Allah knows when. The, the Quran doesn't have to give us those details. And the point here is that, you know, the Quran doesn't give details of exact times uh, and exact places and of exact names. It's very interesting. You know, the Quran only mentions stories of few people by name. And it only names few people. Uh, amongst the Sahaba, we only have the name of Zaid, you know, mentioned in the glorious Quran, Rasulullah's name is only mentioned four times, you know, in the whole of the Quran. So, you know, the, the, the Quran is not really keen on telling us uh, some details, which, uh, you know, some people would love to have, 
but the Quran doesn't regard them as important. It wants us to focus on the core uh, of the message. And the message is a very simple, straightforward message that, you know, don't boast, uh, don't brag, and, you know, don't be arrogant simply, okay? Uh, because the consequences of being so are really harsh, you know, they are destructive, they are damaging, really. So, um, and, and, and this is the theme, you know, that runs through the whole of Surah Al-Qaf, and we'll talk more about that uh, later on. So, but coming back to this, uh, when his uh, orchards are destroyed, uh, he now regrets, you know, he wrings his hands with embarrassment, with regret, with a sense of guilt that, you know, he's upset his God. He's upset Allah by saying what he said to the poor man, and, and uh, here is the consequence of what he has done. So, you know, the warning is, is very clear that, you know, sometimes, you know, we can boast and brag and get away with it. On others, uh, you know, it becomes very difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is angry uh, and punishes uh, and the scourge, you know, does really fall on those people who uh, come and, and, and uh, who have been challenging, abusive, insulting uh, and denial, in denial of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one instance where, you know, we see the punishment coming quite soon, you know, rather than later. However, you know, those who commit evil in this life, a uh, lot of the time they get away in, in terms of Allah does not punishing them here, but there is certainly a far greater punishment in the hereafter. So, what is it that is important in this surah, you know, and how does it relate with previous stories and the stories that follow? Well, when we look at the central theme of Surah Al-Qaf, we notice that, you know, it's really, uh, you know, on the one hand you had the Roman Emperor and you had these young uh, faithful men, you know, who are striving to preserve and save their faith. The Emperor wants to convert them back to his uh, idolatrous uh, way, his mythical uh, and his mythical gods. He wants to draw them to that. But they refuse to do that, and in order to escape him, they run away, and they run to the mountain where they take a refuge in a cave, you know. And the Quran says, you know, they were, they were young men. Fityatun amanu bi rabbihim wa zidnahum huda. You know, they were young men. And this is really very interesting that it, it's, you know, the young men are usually who are the targets of the Prophet's message. We see that in the in, in term of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We see it, you know, with respect to the Bani Israel, the Israelites. Again, Musa concentrated on young people. You know, he focused on the young people and and was able to convert them to and, and to make them follow him. So we see that uh, these were young men, you know, who were who believed in Allah subhanahu wa taala and escaped. Uh, and on the other hand, you had the emperor, the power of the emperor, the, the whole Roman Empire, the wealth of the em emperor was making him arrogant. Uh, and so I hope you can see the parallelism between the story of the young men of cave and the pauper and the, 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 the wealthy man in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in the story. Okay, uh, so there is that similarity. This is a man who is materialistic. That is a spiritual man. The, 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 here you have a rich, wealthy, powerful emperor. Here you have a group of young, uh, faithful uh, ones, uh, you know, poor people. Okay? So you see that similarity, a clash between the worldly power, worldly wealth, and poverty, and, 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 and godliness and spirituality. So there is a clash between materialism and between spirituality. And that is the point, I think, why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that, you know, when the Dajjal comes, recite the Surah Al-Qaf. And the point about the Dajjal is that the Dajjal uh, is, 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 is about world, is about worldliness, is about, you know, trapping us in, in, in the world through Dajjal through uh, fraud, through deception, 
uh, and you know if we look around us you know we see so much of deception all around us and this uh, surah is a beautiful and a powerful uh, illustration uh, of this clash between righteousness and wickedness between spirituality and between materialism between powerful men and between the weak believing men and in all of them inshallah as we will see in the next story of Musa and Hizr the winning party is those of Allah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the beauty of this surah al-qaf wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allahu ghafoor Allahu rahim Allahu yuhibbul muhsinin